So folks, I've got uh, five street photography tips for beginners. So a lot of people, um, when they first start out in street photography, I think a lot of them talk about being anxious or intimidated by it because it is quite difficult to uh, photograph strangers, especially when you've got quite a big camera or a, you know an SLR or something like that. So one way I would recommend people get started is you often see people out taking pictures of lots of different things with your mobile phone. Um, and your mobile phone is very inobtrusive and lots of, as I say, lots of people use them. So why not start, even if you've got a good camera, start with your mobile phone and see what you can do. Um, because you won't stick out uh, like a sore thumb if you're taking pictures of things with that. And you're less likely to get people noticing because you look around you with people and do some people watching, which inevitably people are often in their own bubble and totally unaware of what you're doing. But if you take the time to people watch and actually observe what's going on around you, you'll notice just how much people are absorbed in their own own little worlds. So, and you know, they'll be sitting there with their mobile phones and taking pictures of all sorts of things or chatting to their friends or rushing to the office. And this is what it's about, sort of, you know, a bit of observation and looking around and calming your nerves, but just do it with your mobile phone. Dead simple, dead straightforward and observe. Now photographs of street photography do have to ideally have a human or an element of life or humanity, but that doesn't mean they have to have people in them. You can uh, look uh, to take pictures of things where it looks like a person has been or an animal has been, um, or it might be um, some road markings on the road and somebody's dropped a banana skin or something like that and it just happens to be that the two colours match because yellow bananas, yellow lines on the road. Um, things like that are often quite, you know, clever to put together and you're not taking pictures of people which again uh, gives people a lot of uh, anxiety. Now, another good thing to use is reflections. Again, when you use a reflection, you're not directly pointing at what you want to take a picture of. So again, using your observational skills to look around you, you could use um, the reflection of a shop that maybe is shut or there's nobody in. You could use a puddle on the ground as a reflection, a mirror uh, on a car door or something that you could photograph. And what you're doing is you're aiming to frame the person in the reflection and you take the picture of the reflection. Um, and again, the person won't really realise, or the people, or whatever you take the picture of, will be framed in the reflection rather than direct. You're not pointing the camera at them. You just look like you're taking a picture of a puddle, for example. So it's another really good way to use the environment around you, because street photography is not just about the people, it's about the environment. But you can use that environment to frame the people, to frame what you're taking a picture of. So use reflections. So now I'm going to talk about a technique called the fishing technique, which I've used quite a lot because of my mobility problems. Um, but it's also uh, quite a good technique to use, again, if you're a bit anxious about what's going on around you. And the idea behind the, the fishing technique is you pick an area or a background, it might be a billboard with something interesting on, and you look like you're photographing the billboard, but you also take photographs as people walk into that space. It could be a shadow to look into or, or anything that you can sort of frame the person in. Um, you've got to look around you, see what's around and then note the people are walking past and then you wait for them to come into the frame. And again, they're not really going to notice you. And that's the best way to, to do it, um, to, get, to get started. You don't also have to look like you're running after and chasing people because often you do have to do that. Street photography can involve a lot of walking and when I was uh, pre my um, illness, I uh, could walk five, six, seven kilometres in street photography. Now I struggle to walk more than a kilometre. I'm getting better, but start with fishing because it doesn't get you stressed out about charging around and gallivanting around all over the place. And again, if you have mobility issues, sitting on a bench where looking at a billboard and photographing people as walk past uh, and waiting for lots of different people gives you lots of opportunities. There's, awful lot of opportunities will happen nearby where you are. You don't have to gallivant around to get the good shots in street photography. Um, you just have to be very observant about what's around you. Now lastly, to talk about 
cameras. So I've set about starting off with a mobile phone is a really good way to do it. And I think that probably is the best way for a lot of people, even if you have a camera, if you're anxious. Now, if you want to get straight out there with a camera, um, look at my other video about the, uh, the X100V. I'll link it in the description below. But a camera like that, you don't have to be as expensive. Just a little compact camera is a great camera to start with. Again, it's unobtrusive, but it's got a bit more performance, power, flexibility with a zoom lens maybe than a mobile phone has. Mobile phones tend to be fixed lenses. However, I like to use a 23mm lens on what's called an APS-C camera. This is equivalent to a 35mm lens on what's called a full-frame camera. If you're unsure about cameras and, and sensor sizes like full-frame and APS-C, I will do another video on that. Comment below if you want me to do that and I'll tell you about the different sensor sizes. Essentially though, all cameras before digital were full frame and a 35 millimeter lens sees like the human eye does it's the same field of view. This is why for documentary photography, the 35 millimeter focal length on full frame or 23 millimeter on um, a cropped camera, an APS-C camera is a very favored focal length. So if you're using an interchangeable lens camera or you have a camera with a zoom and you can set it to the equivalent of 35 millimeters, that's a good focal length to work with. You'd be surprised and you don't have to necessarily, it means you have to walk around with your feet a lot if you, if you want to get the shot. But again, you've also got your zoom for that if your camera happens to have that. So if you have less mobility like I have now, take a zoom, but try and do it with 23 millimeter set on the lens. Um, to give you an idea of what that natural focal length is. You know, you can move from spot to spot and then sit down like I do. That's what I do. I sit down and try and work as much as you can with 23mm or 33mm, sorry, 35mm um, to get that natural documentary look that you would see when you're watching television or something. And many things are shot at 35mm because it's a very natural what the human eye sees. Mobile phones tend to be a bit wider. So they're current about 24 mil, which is OK. Um, but things when they're wider can look a bit distorted, especially at the sides, you know, angles on buildings. And when you zoomed in, you're kind of not picking up the environment around the person. That's not to say you can't take good shots with zoom lenses. There is no rule for lens to use. So I would recommend a small camera if you can. Um, small interchangeable lens, micro four thirds cameras are really good. Different sensor size again. I think I'm definitely going to have to do this video on sensor size to give you an idea of it. Um, or a small APS-C camera. Um, I use my Fujifilm XS10, which I'll show you here, um, which is a really compact camera. And I also use my X100V, which is a fixed lens camera, which its lens is equivalent to 35mm. So there you go. Um, that's some tips for cameras to use. You can use any one you want, though. I do go out with my Lumex, which is a huge camera. Um, very heavy um, and people do notice you um, as I say I mean I've been bringing up various examples of shots of things and you get but sometimes when you notice as you grow in confidence it's really really good to um, to see that because you get to see the reaction of people when they've clocked you taking a picture and sometimes they're not happy anyway I hope you enjoyed this little video on some tips and uh, let me know if you want more videos like this or what videos you'd like to see in the comments below. Please do ask questions in the comments below. Remember to uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video um, and I will catch you all uh, soon. Catch you later folks. Bye.